Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. President Obama announced his nominations for the new Secretary of Defense and Director of the CIA, Chuck Hagel at Defense and John Brennan for the CIA. Now joining us to discuss these appointments is Ray McGovern. Ray's a former CIA analyst for several decades. He's a ri prolific writer, does many things, including he's an often contributor to The Real News. Thanks for joining us, Ray. So let's start with Chuck Hagel uh, at uh, Defense. You wrote a piece for the Baltimore Sun where you thought it would be a good idea for President Obama to select Hagel, and he did. But why did you think that would be a good idea? Well, in short, Paul, uh, Hagel is no chicken hawk. He volunteered to go to Vietnam at the worst of the fighting, wounded twice. He'd been there, done that, okay? And he's been very, very upfront about his reluctance, or anyone's reluctance, should be, to send U.S. troops into battle and for no good reason. And Chicken Hawk, for those that don't know, although I suppose everybody does, well, somebody, you know, somebody who sits in Washington ordering other people to go fight. That's exactly right. Or you could go back to George W. Bush, who, you know, uh, his daddy got him a job with the Texas National Guard because expressly, explicitly, George Bush said he didn't want to go to Vietnam. Or you look at Dick Cheney with five deferments. How many deferments do you think Joe Biden had? Five. Okay. So you got a bunch of people that have no direct experience in war. That is really important. Chuck Hagel would be the first person with combat experience to be Secretary of Defense in 30 years. Mel Laird was the last one. He was a naval uh, was a mid okay, you, you, would, you would think with this kind of a record, it would be a rather popular choice. He's a Republican. You would think Republicans would embrace him. But as we know, far from embracing him, there's a campaign to block this nomination. In fact, there's already a, a lobby group informed with lots of money to take out ads against Hegel. There, apparently, there's been some website created specifically just to attack Hegel. So, so what, what, what's getting them all riled up? Well, Paul, uh, Hegel has not been sufficiently passionately attached to Israel. He said some things that have really uh, rubbed some noses at a joint. Um, for example, he had the temerity to say that I am the American senator, not an Israeli senator. Oh, now on the face of that, you know, who could object to that? <laughs> well, there's an awful lot of people like the felon. Elliot Abrams, who I heard on NPR yesterday, saying that Hegel was anti-Semitic. He's anti-Semitic because he says he's the senator from the U.S. Well, no, no, they say he's anti-Semitic because he talked about the Jewish lobby and not the Israel lobby. He used the word. He didn't say Zionist or Israel. He said Jewish. Yeah. Well. Okay. So he said that. The problem really is that these folks, they're called the neocons. These folks who have real difficulty distinguishing between the objective aims or the strategic aims of Israel on the one hand and the strategic needs of the United States on the other, um, those are the people that uh, think that Hegel might decide that contrary to even what the president has said in terms of marching in lockstep with Israel, that Hegel might say, oh, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> Does this really make sense? I mean, uh, Mr. President, I know you said before the Super Bowl last year that your primary uh, objective is the defense of the United States oh, and also Israel. I think we should give the United States a separate sentence this year and say your primary objective is to secure the United States. And if you want to add a second sentence, and we're also interested in defending Israel, that would be all right. But people need to know <laughs> that you're interested first and foremost in U.S. policy toward the Middle East bereft of any passionate attachment the kind of attachment that George Washington himself warned it's a, against. It's a, it's a very it interesting appointment by Obama because he had to know the, the, the pressure that was going to be brought to bear against him on this. He yeah. knew that the uh, Likud, the right-wing party in power in Israel, and their allies in AIPAC and the lobby group in, in the United States and all the senators and members of the House, he knew this was going to be not very well liked, and he did it anyway. Yeah, and that's a very good sign, Paul. It shows that uh, there's a little bit of uh, maybe a spine implant that uh, Obama has gotten over Christmas. Uh, this is big. Uh, last year was really a roller coaster with respect to U.S.-Israeli relations. In February, as I already said, uh, Obama is saying we're going to march in lockstep with Israel. Uh, Israel is uh, equal foot in terms of uh, our 
determination to defend it. Come around September, come around late August, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff is saying, I don't want to be complicit if the Israelis attack Iran. Hillary Clinton is saying, you know, these uh, red lines about Netanyahu, uh, that's BS. We're not interested in that. And the president is saying, sorry, I have to be on The View on TV. I can't meet with you, Netanyahu, when you come to the United States. There was a sea change there. Right. Obama faced them down. Now, this, this appointment, which I dearly feared that we would be in jeopardy because of all this opposition, Obama stood by it. And that speaks volumes. It means that the second part of 2012 is the continuity here and not the blind, the blind support of whatever Netanyahu does, in, including the, uh, you know, the settlements to keep going on with just verbal opposition from the United States. That that's the thing of the past, that this is a new era and Hegel's going to make, uh, make some changes. Well, we, 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 don't, we, don't know whether, we, we don't know yet whether there's any change in terms of Obama and pressure on Israel vis-a-vis -vis settlements and resolution with the United St with the Palestinians and two state issues and those kinds kinds of questions. What we do know oh, from Obama's history, and if you look at what he said about the Iraq War, he opposed the Iraq War not because he's against projecting U.S. power all over the world. He just thought it was a stupid war, the Iraq War. And I, I think all, what what this is telling us is he thinks an attack on Iran would be stupid and doesn't want to do it, it's, it doesn't mean he's against projecting U.S. power. And you can see this from his second appointment of John Brennan. The guy he's been sitting with choosing who to kill with drones is now head of the CIA. Well, you're right about that. Uh, but, you know, he also realizes now, uh, four years later, that Afghanistan is a fool's errand. And he needs support in the Senate uh, to, to contend with the back sniping that is already occurring about losing Afghanistan. So the Iran thing is crucial. And Hegel is one of the last people that would think that we could send U.S. service people uh, into a war with Iran simply because Israel started it or simply because Israel wanted us to do it. So that is big, okay? Now, uh, with respect to projecting power, you know, it's only a limited num amount of power you can project. And what we're seeing now is a retrenchment. You know the problems here in this country I think Obama will be helped by Hegel in sort of delimiting the defense budget, which has grown out of all proportion to the threats that Americans face. I guess my point is I think it's, it's, a, it's a rational, it's a good thing that Hegel's there because I, I don't know if people on the Real News have heard me say this. I've been saying it informally right from the first day President was, uh, Obama was president, that the one thing I was actually hopeful for is he might be more rational on Iran than, than the Republicans would be. I, I didn't have a lot of expectations otherwise. And I think this Hegel appointment is that. But uh, when, when you look at Brennan going to the CIA, it means that, does it not mean sort of an expansion of this drone assassination program? Sure. Now, Paul, just one little footnote about Hegel. Hegel has served on the, foreign, the president's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board. That is key. He knows intelligence back and forth, and he knows... And he knows very well that in November 2007, the entire intelligence community pronounced itself unanimously and with great confidence that Iran had stopped building a nuclear weapon at the end of 2003. And that judgment has been revalidated every year since by the director of national intelligence. I think Kegel will be able to use that cudgel against the neocons. So why do we have to attack a country that's not building nuclear weapons? So that's a key thing. You're right to focus on Iran. I'm more hopeful now than I would have been if the president had sort of caved again. And All right, so what do, you, what do you make of the John Brennan appointment to the as director of CIA? Well, I, I wish I could uh, be more optimistic, Paul. I know Brennan. Uh, I knew him as a young sort of failed analyst. Uh, the way you, you promote yourself these days at Washington is you, you find a job in the White House and uh, catch the attention of people like George Tenet, who was at the White House. And Tenet brought him back when Tenet became deputy uh, CIA director, brought him back to CIA and made him into what he is today. He even sent him to uh, Saudi Arabia to be chief of station. Now, Brennan pretends to know Arabic. Uh, he can say Abdul Muttalib, just really good. I've, I've, I've practiced that. Abdul Muttalib, okay? So when he goes before the press and he's Abdul Muttalib, that's very impressive. But when Helen Thomas asks him, why do they hate us? 
why did they do these things? Why did Abdul Muttalib try to knock down that plane over Detroit? He says, uh, they're hardwired to hate us. They just hate us. It's the religion. Helen says, oh, so it's the real. Well, it's not the religion. It's the way I, they, they just hate us. They hate us, and they're a danger to our homeland. Now, either Brennan is dumb, and that's possible, you know, or uh, he's really sold out to the people who are profiteering on these unending wars. I mean, why would you continue to press these things? Pakistan has 175 million people. What are we doing? We're alienating hundreds of them every day with these drone strikes. They also have nuclear weapons. So, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Well, just to refresh, Unless, just, just to refresh everybody's memory here, Brennan is, 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 sits in the White House with President Obama deciding who they're going to kill with drones. He, hel he helps draw up the kill list. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, that's pretty confirmed now. You know, picture it. Now, I've, I've been in the White House. I used to brief there. But, you know, my picture is Brennan comes in on Tuesday. So that's the day they do the kill list. And he says, Mr. President, we have, we have 13 here. Uh, here are the names. Can you sign off on this? And uh, Obama looks at him and says, well, number three. Didn't you tell me last week number three has three small kids? Well, yes, Mr. President. But we know, we know he's a suspected militant. We know. So, well, look, take three, put them in. Let's do three next week. Uh, let's just do 12 this week. Sign off. Them. And then he goes, uh, Barack Obama goes to have a nice lunch with his wife. Give me a break. That's what goes on in the White House now. Yeah, that's almost as bad as Condoleezza Rice uh, presiding over uh, demonstrations of enhanced interrogation and techniques. And we, and we which know was this, also done in the White House. And this was more or less leaked to the New York Times, right? Yeah, it's not like you're speculating. These, the New York Times kind of described these meetings. Well, yeah, this was when the White House saw some incentive in showing the president to be a tough guy like Brennan, you know? I know Brennan. He's from northern New Jersey. He's a tough guy. When he says, yeah, we do this without due process, well, don't be, don't be stupid here. We do due process right here in the White House. That's how we do due process now. Uh, Eric Holder says so. Give me a break. <laughs> That's the kind of mentality you have there. And what really, really is missing here, where's the legal profession in this country, you know? Due process means the judiciary. It means the courts. And here they're letting these people get away with saying, no, no, we do due process here in the White House. It's unconscionable. So what does it mean for the CIA? Any, is, any changes from the way it's acting? Well, Paul, as you know, there are two CIAs. One, the analysis CIA that Truman envisaged and set up. That's the one I worked in. And that's the one that prevented a war with Iran. That's no exaggeration with that estimate, saying they had stopped working on a nuclear weapon in 2003. That one still has some people of integrity in it. The other one that Truman never envisaged, this operational you know, covert action sort of thing, well, they're riding high. They're, they're flying drones all over the place, and Brennan can be expected to enhance the military capabilities that really should not belong in the CIA. And Truman said so before he died. And now President Obama has his guy controlling those drones. So it's, in a sense, it's, a, it's, an, it's an extension of the drone program and what they've been doing together. I think Obama, you know, has a certain confidence in Brennan that he has in nobody else. I hope, <laughs> I hope it's not a misplaced confidence. Uh, Brennan's a pretty treacherous guy. And I think well, the way Obama looks at the CIA is if he has his own man controlling the CIA, Brennan, that there's less danger that the CIA will play games, that less, less prospect that the CIA will get involved in the kinds of things against John F. Kennedy that happened then. Right, thanks for joining us, Ray. Most welcome. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.